Former British Prime Minister Liz Truss spent her final days in office in 2022 prepared for Russia to use nuclear weapons on Ukraine. An updated edition of the politician's biography, Out of the Blue, notes that the potential consequences would have affected Britain, which is why crisis meetings were held, among other things. Truss spent hours studying satellite weather data and wind patterns, preparing for radiation poisoning should the Kremlin dictator move to use nuclear weapons, the Times reports. The fears were reportedly based on US intelligence that there was a 50% chance that Russia would deploy tactical nuclear weapons in a war against Ukraine or use a more powerful warhead over the Black Sea. The media also writes that on October the 18th, 2022, when the then UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace traveled to the United States to discuss a full-scale Russian invasion, US President Joe Biden stated that there was a direct threat of similar actions by Russia if the situation continued to develop along the same scenario it was moving along. Media reported earlier that the war in Ukraine could accidentally escalate into a nuclear conflict, all because of Russia's actions or inactions regarding nuclear weapons near the front. Moreover, Russia's failure to properly secure its nuclear arsenals in the country's west poses a grave danger as Ukraine's desire to strike targets inside Russia increases. Foreign Affairs writes, Ukraine has every right to defend itself in this way, and there is no indication that Ukrainian forces will deliberately target nuclear warhead storage sites. However, with Ukrainian drone strikes already reaching Moscow, it is clear that at least 14 Russian nuclear storage sites are now within range of their drones. The article says, Two of these sites are reportedly located about 150 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. Another five are approximately 250 to 300 kilometers away. These distances are within the range of the advanced missiles that Western allies are transferring to Ukraine and which are still prohibited from striking Russian territory. The media writes that responsibility for the movement of nuclear warheads lies directly with the Russian government. Russia knows that its warheads should not be located near conventional military operations. After Ukraine launched its first drone and missile strikes on Belgorod in the spring of 2023, Russia quickly announced that its Belgorod storage facility no longer contained nuclear warheads, understanding that warheads should not be stored near active combat. In addition, the satellite showed the preparation of the Russian R-30 Bulava nuclear missile. The missile is reportedly one of the components of the nuclear triad. UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer described the climate crisis as the single biggest opportunity for next-generation jobs on Tuesday, as the second day of the COP29 climate summit kicked off in Azerbaijan's capital Baku. Speaking outside the convention, he announced a £1 billion order for offshore wind turbine blades that would generate jobs in Hull, northeast England. This is an opportunity for the UK not just to show leadership, but to get those jobs and to ensure that we're at the forefront of the race for those next-generation jobs, he said. Asked whether meeting the UK's ambitious emissions goals would mean British citizens would have to cut back on eating meat and taking flights, Starmer accepted they were difficult targets but insisted they were achievable and that the main driver would be switching the UK to clean power by 2030. He also said he looked forward to working with US President-elect Donald Trump, who will likely pull the United States out of the landmark Paris Agreement and try to roll back many of the Biden administration's signature climate moves. Several big names and powerful countries are noticeably absent from this year's COP, unlike past climate talks which had the star power of a soccer World Cup. But 2024's climate talks are more like the International Chess Federation World Championship, lacking the recognizable names but big on nerd power and strategy. The top leaders of the 13 largest carbon dioxide polluting countries will not appear with their countries responsible for more than 70% of 2023's heat trapping gases. Biggest polluters and strongest economies China and the United States aren't sending their number ones. The four most populous nations with more than 42% of all the world's population aren't having leaders speak. I think it's very important for the United Kingdom to show leadership on the climate challenge. It's a very important challenge of our time. It's also, I've long believed, the single biggest opportunity for the next generation of jobs. And that's demonstrated in the fact that this morning here at COP, 
I'm announcing a £1 billion order for blades for offshore wind, which will be jobs in Hull. Now, that's really welcome news. I'm really pleased. There's a global race on for the jobs of the future in renewables. I'm absolutely determined that the UK is not just going to be in that race, but we're going to be winning that race because that race is measured in well-paid jobs across the United Kingdom. That's the single most important thing as far as I'm concerned. Well, I look forward to working with President Trump, of course I do, as I'll work with all global leaders on this. Um, but we just had a very successful international summit for investment just a few weeks ago, which brought in over £60 billion worth of investment. Uh, most of that was in renewables, and that's investment directly into the United Kingdom. Uh, that's vitally important. That's jobs for generations to come right across the United Kingdom, and that is of central importance. My main mission which is to make sure that we grow the economy in the United Kingdom. And I, what I mean by that is living standards, people feeling better off across the United Kingdom. And I think this is an opportunity for the UK, not just to show leadership, um, but to get those jobs um, and to ensure that we're at the forefront of the race for those next generation of jobs. Well, I'll set out our um, goal later on today. But look, it will be ambitious. And that's measured not by telling people what to do, um, it's measured by making sure that we get to clean power by 2030. That's the single most important target on the way to the emissions. And that will bring with it lower bills for people for their energy. It'll give them independence so that tyrants like Putin can't put his boot on our throat, causing all sorts of difficulties for our energy bills. And it comes with the next generation of jobs. So that, yes, I accept, I, ac well. I accept it's, uh, it's difficult target. Um, it's an achievable target, but it's not about telling people how to live their lives. I'm not interested in that. I am interested in making sure that their energy bills are stable, that we've got energy independence, um, and that we also, along the way, pick up the next generation of jobs, which will be measured across the United Kingdom, good, well-paid jobs um, in every community. I'm centrally and very interested in that. Thank you very much. Thank you. COP28 President Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber opened the 29th session of the Conference of the Parties by expressing gratitude to delegates for their commitment to addressing global climate challenges. In his remarks, Al Jaber emphasized unity, action, and the UAE's dedication to fostering partnerships and dialogue amid global complexity and conflict. He urged attendees to continue working together to deliver meaningful result. Assalamu alaikum. Distinguished delegates, it gives me great pleasure to declare open the 29th session of the Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change.